We're about three weeks away from getting the Pixel 10 series phones, and I'm excited. I'm really excited because this is my probably favorite time of the year when it comes to phones. We get the new Pixel phones, and the 10 series should be, of course, the best ones that we've ever had. But there's a couple of things I want to talk about. And the biggest one, probably the most exciting thing for me, is the new Tensor 5 chip. Now, there are some new colors. And here's a photo I'll go ahead and show you real quick so you can see these were leaked just a couple of days ago. But uh, yeah, the new Indigo color looks absolutely fire. But we've got a couple new ones, which you can take a look at. And I'm interested, of course, to see what they look like in real life. Because once you know, photos in real life don't always do like colors justice. Sometimes they look a little bit different in real life, different lighting kind of changes things. But yeah, finally getting some new colors. So that'll be neat. But the biggest thing for me is the new Tensor G5. Now, if you, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that this is the first chip that's not being made by Samsung. Samsung has been working with Google and making the Tensor chips for the last four years, starting with the Tensor 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4. And the Tensor 4 has been a very good chip. And it's fixed basically all the problems I had with the previous ones, better battery life, better heat management, better standby time, and the performance has been good. So the Tensor 5, what's changed? Well, TSMC is making it now. If you don't know who TSMC is, they are the best chip manufacturers in the world when it comes to making smartphone chips, especially for Android. So they're making the chip now. So the thing is, if you take a look at chips, they not, not like Doritos and Lay's and everything, but <laughs> if you take a look at the processor chips, they what we're going to get is a three nanometer chip. So as the... The chips get smaller and smaller. They're not made exactly the same way. So Samsung has their way of making them. They've got their core. They've got their fabrication, the design, all that stuff. TSMC, they make their own. Now, if they're making the same chip, of course, then they use the same process and everything. But TSMC has the better processor, more efficient. And we've found things generally with them like just being better overall chips whenever you match up one from TSMC versus Samsung. Because for the longest time, TSMC and Samsung have been working with Qualcomm, Snapdragon, they'll make the same chips, like 30%, 40% may, might get made by Samsung, the other ones get made by TSMC. The TSMC ones are always better. And well, now we're gonna get that for Google. So I'm excited for that. Now, what we do have though also is we'll have, of course, upgrades and improvements. And I don't know what the clock speed is gonna be. My guess is it's probably gonna be about 3.5 gigahertz or whatever. And we can let the crying begin already. The wailing, the gnashing of teeth, the tearing, you know, ripping things off the walls because it's not a four gigahertz chip, right? And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be at all, right? I, I don't have a problem with this. I, I've been saying for the longest time, once you get over a three gigahertz chip, it does everything you need it to do. And everybody's still doing their benchmarks on Genshin Impact, right? <laughs> I think it's been out for like four or five years now. So the chip will run it just fine. If you're going to get a Tensor 5, it's going to run games just fine. And a lot of times people think that it's the chip that is the problem to why it doesn't run exactly as well as maybe the Snapdragon counterpart. It all comes down to optimization. So whenever you have the largest platform being Snapdragon and being the eight elite chipset, then yes, these manufacturers, they put out their chip, but the software guys that make the apps, they actually optimize their stuff, right? It'll optimize for Android 16, optimize for the Snapdragon chipset. So it's not necessarily a raw power issue. Some people are like, oh, it doesn't run this as well. It's because of the optimization and sometimes other companies work like the software developers will work and make special things right i remember we got fortnite and that came out and there was some cool stuff for that but there are some phone manufacturers or chips that are optimized for like let's say PUBG before that i think it was the oneplus phone before or i can't remember which phone it was but it got a leg up like it got better performance uh, because of some deal they made so there is optimization but the chip itself will be fine like, it will be fine. It will be the best pixel experience we've ever had. My guess is probably about 3.5 gigahertz. It's not going to be 4. It's not going to be 4.5. I mean, and that even lines up kind of with what we've seen with the Exynos 2500. It's been a good chip. I, I don't have really any complaints about it whatsoever in the Z Flip 7. It's been fine. It's got great power. It has been seems to be optimized pretty good with the cameras. So maybe the Exynos 2500 is the best chipset that Samsung has made in a very long time. But the Tensor 5, 3 nanometer chipset, and it's going to have something that's really special, like really, really, really special that's going to, should, should be, because I can't say for certain that it is, 
take the photography to the next level and it's going to have a Google image signal processor. So Google is custom image signal processor. I've talked about this before in other videos. There's different components when you take a photo, right? It's not just, oh, there's a camera in here, you press the button it, and you take a shot, it does the exposure and it puts it on film. This is digital. So you have to have a image signal processor that takes that image data and converts it and works with the processor to render the image. So Google basically created computational photography way back starting with the Pixel 3. And then it just ran off and left everybody behind. They're like, hey, it's not just about the camera. We could do something here with this chip. <laughs> we could do something with this image signal processor and make better looking photos than everybody else. So they use their computational photography, their algorithms based stuff, all the things that they do to make the best looking pictures. And it's interesting because even though they don't have a Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, even though they may not even have the best possible camera that's out there, they do something with their Google magic to make the best looking photos. Now, the criticism a lot of times people have about a Google Pixel photo happens to be with the processing itself. Sometimes they look a little over processed and it might look a little less natural, even though it looks sharp and it looks beautiful and it looks fantastic it might not look say necessarily as natural. And that's one reason I really like the Sony cameras because to me and the Sony Xperia phones, they have such a natural look. I love that natural look. When you take something on Samsung, a lot of times it has a oversaturated look. And that may not necessarily be because of the actual camera itself, but because of the screen and the way that Samsung optimizes them because they really like that oversaturated look. They really like those colors to pop because they look more vibrant. And a lot of times something looks more vibrant. People say, oh, it looks better, even though it's not as true to life. So Google, yes, they make the best, they, they take the best photos, but sometimes they do look a little over-processed. So I'm hoping that this takes things to the next level. And we're actually supposed to have the same cameras for a second year in a row. And I don't have any problem with that. And I've said this before when it comes to like Samsung phones. So when the new Samsung phone comes out and we get a new chipset, and we get, a new, we get a new camera. A lot of times, the pictures it's taking at the end of the year, when the new phone comes out, look better than they did at the beginning of the year. Why is that? It has to do with optimization. So when you put a new camera in there, you get a new chipset, you get all these new things, you get Android updates. Yes, they can put a chip, they can put a camera in there and it takes a good photo. But as they learn to optimize it, as they learn to fine tune it even more, by the time that year turns around, and the new phone comes out, the, the photos are looking better. And then you'll get the new phone with the new camera and you're like, why does this one not take as good of photos as last year? But then after about four or five months, then magically it is taking better photos. It's because it has to do with optimization, right? So with having the same camera, we get consistency. Like Google's already programmed, they've already optimized the camera. Now you're gonna add another layer with the Google image signal processor and that should take things to the next level and you've already got that foundational, okay, we've already learned, we've fine-tuned, we've tweaked this camera to where it's very good. And it's funny, you see this with a lot of games too. Like when you see consoles that come out, the stuff that came out with the original like Nintendo 64 or the original PlayStation 2 came out, and then four or five years later, the games they're making, the year before like the console becomes obsolete and replaced by the new one, they're looking like almost twice as good. You're getting better frames, you're getting optimization, you're getting better looking stuff. And you're like, how are they doing this with the same PlayStation that they did four years ago? But it looks so much better now. And it all has to do with learning and taking advantage of, exploiting the hardware and just fine tuning everything. It's not just putting Legos together. Like you're really working with better, better building blocks at that point. So I'm excited to see what we get. I'm excited to see where it takes it. And I don't think we need new cameras every year. Every two years is fine because there are advancements in technology and things like that. So after two years, by the third year, I really like to see a new camera. I don't really like what Samsung does, especially with like the flip phones and the fold phones. Like the fold phone is different now because we do have the 200 megapixel camera. But the Z, Fold, Z Flip 7 basically has had the same cameras for like four years. Yes, we have the Exynos 2500. Yes, we have a new image signal processor. Yes, it does look good and it takes good photos. But... I feel like it's just a way for them to save money and it's like, okay, it's good enough, but it could be great. And that's what I like what we're seeing here. The Tensor 5, it's going to be good. Have the new chipset, all those great things, new image signal processor. 
I believe we're still going to get 128 gigabytes of storage, though, which kind of pisses me off. <laughs> we're in the year 2025, like right? halfway through it. When are we going to quit having 128 as the baseline storage? Like we really need to go to 256, and they're doing this with the Pixel 10 Pro XL. So with the Pixel 10 Pro XL, what we're going to see is they get rid of the 128 model and the baseline is 256, which of course it costs more money. It's gonna be just like they did with Apple. Apple did this with the iPhone two years ago and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, we got rid of the 128 and it's like, they didn't raise the price. They just got rid of the cheaper model. So they're selling you the 256 for the same price. So it's not really a price increase. They're just removing the 128 model but presumably it looks like they're keeping it with the regular 10 Pro. I'm like, look, just go to 256 already. <laughs> like, why do we have Pro level phones that have 128 storage in the year 2025? Like, that needs to go away. Like, it really needs to go away, like, badly. So, anyway, uh, that's the, the big exciting thing. I'm really excited about the new chip. I'm really excited about the image signal processor. And also, as these tensors have been around and they maintain some of the same architecture, the games will get better. Oh, and I'm just saying this because one of the biggest things people talk about is when it comes to the tensors, it's not good for gaming. And it's not designed for gaming. Google gives a good enough processor you can play AAA title games. You're going to get a better better experience if you play on the S25 Ultra. It's just facts. It's going to be a little bit better, but it's still going to be a good experience on the Pixel 10 Pro, Pixel 10 Pro X. So I, I don't have a problem with that, but as we have the different architecture, because the tensor chips are made differently than the Snapdragon chips, as these companies start to optimize them a little bit more, and especially as they get a bigger footprint, as there's more and more of these phones out in the real world, then you're going to get a better experience just by de facto with that anyway. So I'm hoping we'll see better gaming for people who care about that. And I, good gosh, please give us UFS4 storage. <laughs> like this 3.1 stuff needs to go away. But anyway, I'm excited. I just wanted to talk about that and have a little bit more of a deep dive to kind of explain how Google makes such good photos with their phones, but also like the behind the scenes stuff and why this Google custom image signal processor is so important, right? So that's all I got. If you have any questions, comments, gripes, concerns, complaints, all that stuff, please, of course, go to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. Save the date. August 20th is when they're going to have the release for the Pixel 10 series phones. Super excited. If you want to see more stuff, I'll be covering it extensively. So hit the like on the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out because there's going to be a lot and you don't want to miss it. So that's all I got. As always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.